The perception of truly wireless headphones around the $20 to $25 mark is that they're all trash, mass-produced headphones coming from the same factories in China with bad build quality, terrible sound quality, and just overall lackluster performance. But is this $25 pair of headphones from Halu in the GT7 worthy of your consideration, or are they just more cheap trash? If you guys wanna see a full review of these compared to something like the QCY T13 or any of the other budget headphones I've reviewed recently, go ahead and let me know in the comments section. But before we get started, my name is Mitchell. I'm fluent in tech, so you don't need to be. And as always, I will have chapters to the different parts of this video if you guys wanna skip around. Now let's start with just some basic key specs that you guys are gonna care about. These headphones have a very average five hours of playtime with the headphones only, an extra 15 hours or so of playback with their included case. They take about two hours to charge if the headphones are completely dead. Same with the case. No quick charging feature here, but that's kind of to be expected with a pair of budget headphones. They have AAC and SBC audio playback, which again, very average, but they do have Bluetooth 5.2. And in my experience, they've had absolutely no issues switching between the master and slave. If you guys like to use them in mono mode, range on these has also been surprisingly good. And overall, I think that your connectivity fears shouldn't be a fear with these headphones. Specs out of the way, let's talk about design and build quality. Now, this case has a nice matte finish on it, which my wife said she actually thought was a higher quality feel compared to something like the QCY T13, although the lid doesn't feature any type of mechanism to keep it open, it just kind of flops around. The material on the lid is pretty thin, but they haven't broken on me yet with a week of use. The case is relatively small and svelte, which is nice for a pair of headphones like this. Like this. Ugh. There is no indicator light to show you the battery percentage of the case, but there is a USB-C charging port and a little indicator to tell you when the case is fully charged. Other than that, this case is relatively unremarkable and it actually feels shockingly close in build quality to something like the Redmi AirDots or the Redmi AirDots 2, whereas the Redmi AirDots 3 feel a little bit more premium and that has a button on the case. When you take the headphones out of the case, you're gonna be featured with the same kind of oval in-ear design that you have with the AirPods Pro, uh, the PAMU series of headphones, and you're gonna have a short stem on the bottom. Now, the stem of these has a little kind of cutout to where you can go ahead and touch them for the touch control. And we'll talk about controls in a little bit, but overall, they're very, very simple, minimal and clean aesthetic with that matte plastic going to the rest of the headphones. And overall, I think these headphones design-wise are totally inoffensive at the price point. The headphones themselves don't feature any kind of crazy materials. They have a nice little relief cutout so you don't have the stethoscopic effect when you put them in your ear. And overall, I think that at $25, they're totally acceptable. Moving on from design, let's talk about one of the most important aspects of truly wireless headphones being controls. And this is where I am a little bit disappointed because Halu in the past has done a lot better. These headphones feature a double tap on one side to fast forward the music, single tap on either side to play or pause, triple tap to summons assistant, and if you double tap the left side, it doesn't rewind the track, it just puts you in a gaming mode. And that gaming mode, when I was watching YouTube videos, doesn't seem to offer that big of an improvement in latency, but you guys are gonna have to be a judge in the gaming test, and we'll jump to that right now. Note 10 Pro will be the last Xiaomi device I 
own dash back. I asked on Twitter if you guys wanted a video about me selling my Redmi Note 10 Pro and more of you responded yes than I was expecting. So I thought I would give you guys. Now Halo has advertised these as having a 60 millisecond response time for games, but I don't think that these would be an amazing pair of gaming headphones. I think that if you need a pair of headphones to game with, then you should go ahead and get one of those combo USB-C to uh, headphone jack plus USB-C power input jacks so that you can use a pair of wired headphones. There's brands like Basius that has them and I'll go ahead and I'll have a link to them down below and just use wired headphones for this because wireless headphones are just never going to replace a pair of wired headphones if you're really into mobile gaming. Talking about added features of these headphones, Halo claims that these have an added AI microphone for your calls and environmental noise cancellation. And I think the call quality on these was okay, but you guys be the judge. So as you know, I live on a pretty street out here in Hanoi. And I think that the microphone quality with these things is all right, especially given their price point. But what do you think? Let's talk a little bit about the sound before we get to the final verdict. And I think the sound quality of these has been all right. Are they great at $25? I would say they're just kind of average. Mids feel very much hidden behind bass. They don't have a ton of space and their soundstage isn't out of this world. Although the soundstage is okay, especially with the cutout to reduce the stethoscopic effect. It helps the soundstage a little bit. If you're looking for something to listen to rock and roll or you love vocals, these probably are not going to be a very impressive pair of headphones for you. But if you listen to mostly modern music, hip hop, electronic music, pop music, I think these headphones will be satisfactory, but they're not going to win any awards. And that's okay because Halo has a bunch of other headphones in their lineup like the W1, and I'll have a review to those up here, that do sound really, really good and they won't break the bank. Now, I wanna go ahead and come back to the final verdict because at the beginning of this video, we talked about how at $25, the perception of most headphones is that they're just cheap Chinese garbage and they're all made in the same factory. And I don't think that these headphones necessarily qualify as that. I think that at $25, they do offer a reasonable amount of value, especially for most average consumers. And on top of that, they come from a brand that you can relatively know and trust, and they're not gonna fall apart on you through regular use. That said, I still have a difficult time recommending anyone spend 20 to $25 on truly wireless headphones, because for 30 to $35, there's a bunch of headphones that are significantly better and offer a better overall user experience with slightly better sound, better controls, and better build quality. But really, if you guys wanna go ahead and spend your money at the $25 mark for a pair of headphones, I think that these headphones are totally acceptable and they're definitely better than the average unbranded Chinese junk that you might find on Alibaba, AliExpress, or Amazon. Now, again, if you guys wanna go ahead and pick these headphones up, I'll have links for it down below. And if you guys want to see a comparison video, go ahead, let me know in the comments and hit the subscribe button because I'll probably be doing that in the future. Until next time, guys, it's been Mitchell. Peace. Ugh.